While OpenAI was celebrating GPT-5's launch, China quietly built AI models that match or beat American performance, using 90% less computing power and training costs. The AI race just became a completely different game. It's no longer about who has the biggest models, but who can build the smartest ones most efficiently. I'll show you the shocking performance gaps, the geopolitical chess match happening behind the scenes, and why this competition will determine who controls the future of AI. Welcome back to bitbiased.ai, where we do the research so you don't have to. Today, we're diving deep into the most important tech rivalry of our time, the AI race between China and the United States. This isn't just about building better chatbots. Both countries see AI as the foundation of future economic power, military advantage, and global influence. Whoever leads in AI gets to set the rules for everything from international trade to digital governance. It's essentially a new Cold War, but fought with algorithms instead of nuclear weapons. I'll break down the real performance numbers, the geopolitical chess moves happening behind the scenes, and what this competition means for anyone using AI tools right now. So hit that subscribe button and let's jump into the AI war that's happening right under our noses. Meet the players. Let's start with the players you already know. On Team America, we've got OpenAI with ChatGPT and GPT-5, Google with their Gemini models, Anthropic behind Claude, Meta with their LLAMA models, Elon Musk's XAI with Grok4, and Microsoft heavily invested in the whole ecosystem. These are household names in tech, right? Most of you have probably used at least one of their AI products. But here's where it gets interesting. Meet the Chinese competitors that most Westerners have never heard of, but are absolutely crushing it in the AI game. There's Baidu, China's Google, with their Ernie Bot. Alibaba has Tongyi Chenwen, Tencent built Hunyuan, and SenseTime created SenseChat. But the real excitement is around Chinese AI startups that people call the Four Little Dragons. We're talking about Jipu AI with their GLM series, Baichuan AI with their impressive Baichuan models, Minimax, who's creating advanced conversational AI, and Moonshot AI, who just achieved something incredible that I'll tell you about in a moment. The crazy part? Most people outside of China have no idea these exist, but they're competing head-to-head -head with OpenAI and Google. It's like there's been this parallel universe of AI development happening, and now these two universes are colliding. The technical showdown. For a long time, it seemed obvious that American models dominated. GPT-4 was the king, Claude was impressive, and Chinese AI felt like it was playing catch-up. But here's where this story gets absolutely wild. There's this comprehensive test called Super CLUE. Think of it like the SATs for AI models. In April 2024, GPT-4 was sitting pretty at the top, with Claude right behind it. But just two months later, everything changed. Chinese models surged upward like rockets. Alibaba's Quen tied with Claude for second place. A startup model from DeepSeek tied for third alongside other Chinese competitors. Think about that for a second. In just two months, Chinese AI went from trailing behind to being neck and neck with the best American models. But wait, it gets even more interesting. While companies like OpenAI keep their models locked away as trade secrets, Chinese companies have embraced open source in a big way. Models like ChatGLM3 and Baichuan2 aren't just competing, they're actually outperforming some of Google's and Meta's models on specific tasks. And you can download them and modify them yourself. Now, prepare to have your mind blown. Remember Moonshot AI? In 2025, they released Kimi K2, a trillion parameter monster. Here are the results that sent shockwaves through Silicon Valley. On software engineering tests, Kimi K2 scored 65.8% accuracy, matching proprietary models. On coding challenges, it hit 53.7% versus GPT-4's 44.7%. That's nearly 10 percentage points higher. On difficult math problems, it got 97.4%, while GPT-4 scored 92.4%. But here's what really scared American AI companies. Moonshot claims they achieved these results with a fraction of the training cost of OpenAI's models. As one commentator put it, the scrappy outsider isn't just matching the incumbent's performance, they're doing it better, faster, and cheaper. And remember, this is happening while the U.S. has banned exports of top-tier AI chips to China. Despite these restrictions, China's AI labs found workarounds and continued making breakthroughs. They're using distributed computing, 
developing their own chips, and getting incredibly creative with resources. The bottom line? This isn't a one-sided race anymore. We're seeing genuine technical competition, where innovations on one side push the other side to innovate faster. The geopolitical chess game. Now here's where this gets really serious. We're not just talking about better chatbots anymore. We're talking about who controls the future of global power. Both countries view AI as strategically critical as nuclear weapons or space technology. The nation that dominates AI will shape the future of global power. This became crystal clear in July 2025, when both superpowers released competing AI strategy plans within the same week, essentially declaring war on each other's approach. America's approach? Rally the allies, build the biggest AI infrastructure, and set international standards that favor democratic values. Classic American playbook. Innovate at home, export to friends. But China's playing a completely different game. They're positioning themselves as the Robin Hood of AI, offering to share their technology with developing countries and warning against AI becoming the exclusive game of a few companies. America wants to hoard AI, but will share it with everyone. It's brilliant positioning, honestly. While America talks about responsible AI, China talks about AI for all. Guess which message resonates better in Africa, Asia, and Latin America? And then there's the chip war. The US banned selling advanced AI chips to China, explicitly to slow down their military AI development. But instead of backing down, China turned this into a rallying cry about technology colonialism and unfair distribution of AI resources. The military implications are staggering. Both sides are racing to integrate AI into everything from battlefield decisions to cyber warfare. American officials are terrified that Chinese AI superiority could mean losing military advantage. Chinese officials worry about being vulnerable to US AI-enabled surveillance and attacks. Here's what really keeps me up at night, though. We're heading toward a world where countries have to choose sides. Chinese AI ecosystem or American AI ecosystem. Limited compatibility, different standards, forced digital alignment. Despite all this tension, there's at least some recognition that certain AI risks require cooperation. Both sides acknowledge that autonomous weapon systems and AI-enabled cyber attacks could spiral out of control in ways that threaten everyone. The ethics divide. Let me show you how dramatically different these AI systems really are. I'm going to test both Chinese and American AI on the same sensitive questions, and the results will shock you. When I asked about Tiananmen Square, 1989, DeepSeek, the Chinese AI, literally said, sorry, that's beyond my scope. Let's talk about something else. Just completely shut down the conversation. ChatGPT gave me a detailed historical account of the protests and government crackdown. Same thing with the Winnie the Pooh meme that's used to mock Xi Jinping. The Chinese AI gave me some sanitized response about Pooh being a beloved character and maintaining a wholesome cyberspace. ChatGPT explained the actual political satire. And when I asked, is Taiwan part of China? Well, you can guess how that went. Chinese AI parroted government talking points about integral parts since ancient times. ChatGPT neutrally explained both perspectives. This isn't accidental. Chinese AI comes with built-in censorship by design. The government requires companies to get approval before launching any AI service, register their algorithms, and ensure outputs don't incite subversion or violate core socialist values. Meanwhile, America's approach is basically the opposite. Encourage innovation first, figure out the rules later. We have voluntary guidelines, industry self-commitments, and a general philosophy of let the market sort it out. Now here's the paradox. Chinese regulations actually force more transparency with the government about how algorithms work, while U.S. companies keep their methods secret from everyone. So transparency means different things. In China, the government knows everything about your AI. In America, nobody knows anything about anyone's AI. The surveillance angle is where this gets really dystopian. China uses AI for mass facial recognition, social credit scoring, predictive policing, basically monitoring everything. From Beijing's view, this maintains order. From a Western perspective, it's a nightmare surveillance state. Both countries worry about AI safety, but they approach it completely differently. 
China removed over 3,500 non-compliant AI apps in just six months and requires pre-launch safety assessments. America relies on companies policing themselves and public pressure. For you as a user, this means the AI's behavior depends entirely on whose rules it follows. Want uncensored information and open political discussion? You'll prefer U.S. models. Want content moderation and avoiding controversial topics? Chinese models might appeal to you. But here's the thing. As AI gets more powerful, these philosophical differences become more consequential for everyone, not just users in each country. The money battle. Let's talk numbers, because money reveals who's really winning this race. On paper, America seems to dominate. The U.S. has about 9,500 AI companies compared to China's 2,000. American AI firms have attracted $605 billion in private investment over the last decade, while Chinese firms got $86 billion. That's a 7 to 1 advantage. But here's China's secret weapon, the government. While American companies rely on venture capitalists and private investors, China poured $184 billion of government money directly into AI startups. Plus, local governments are giving out free cloud computing, subsidized AI chips, and vouchers for data centers. After ChatGPT went viral, China saw this explosion of AI startups that media called the Four Little Dragons. Most were founded by Tsinghua University alumni, which has become like the Stanford of Chinese AI. But here's what's interesting. Unlike America, where ChatGPT dominated immediately, Chinese consumers were overwhelmed by choice. Too many chatbots, nobody's sure which was best. The market was fragmented instead of consolidated. And then there's the talent war. China now graduates twice as many AI PhD students as America and six times more STEM undergraduates. But talent flows both ways. In 2019, 59% of top AI researchers worked for US companies versus 11% for Chinese companies. By 2022, that shifted to 42% versus 28%. China's closing the gap fast. The really wild part? At top US AI institutions, 38% of researchers are of Chinese origin, slightly more than the 37% who are American. This whole competition depends on talent that moves freely between both countries. The billion-dollar question is monetization. Running these massive AI models costs a fortune, and nobody's figured out sustainable business models yet. Both sides are racing to crack the enterprise market, because that's where the real money is not flashy consumer chatbots. Competition is driving innovation faster on both sides. We're seeing new model releases every few months instead of years, more efficient training methods, and price wars that benefit everyone. What this means for you. So after covering all this tech, politics, and money, what does this AI war actually mean for your daily life? Right now, most people outside China have never even tried a Chinese AI model. You're probably using ChatGPT, maybe Claude, Google's Gemini, or Grok. But based on those benchmarks we discussed, you might actually prefer Chinese models for certain tasks. Moonshot's Kimi K2 beats GPT-4 at coding and math, and many offer similar performance at lower costs. The trade-off? U.S. models give you uncensored information and open political discussion. Chinese models come with built-in content moderation and avoid controversial topics entirely. Here's the scenario that keeps experts worried. We could end up with two separate AI ecosystems. Countries aligned with China using Chinese AI platforms. Countries aligned with America using US platforms. Limited compatibility, different standards, basically separate digital worlds. Your privacy gets complicated too. USAI means data stored on American servers with more transparency, while Chinese AI means potential government access but better ecosystem integration. The good news? This competition is making AI better faster. Models improve every few months, more approaches are being tried, and price competition benefits everyone. This isn't just a tech story. It's about democracy versus authoritarianism in the digital age and who gets to encode their values into our most powerful tools. Conclusion. So here's where we stand. 
China has gone from playing catch-up to competing head-to-head -head with America, with some Chinese models beating GPT-4 using 90% less computing power. We're watching a new Cold War where algorithms are the weapons. Nobody knows how this ends. We could see continued leapfrogging, specialization in different AI applications, or fragmentation into separate ecosystems. But this competition is pushing both sides to innovate faster than ever, which benefits humanity if we manage the risks. Here's the thing. You're part of this story. Every AI model you use, every vote you cast influences how this develops. If this opened your eyes to what's really happening, hit subscribe and share this with someone who needs to understand the stakes. Let me know in the comments which AI models you've tried and what you think about this competition. We're living through a pivotal moment. The decisions being made now will echo through decades, affecting how we work, think about privacy, and organize society. The US-China AI race isn't just about technology. It's about what kind of future we build together. Stay curious, stay informed, and remember, your voice matters in this AI-powered future.